Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of Jenny's Pizza. So, if you're new to the channel, have a look in the right corner of you, you can see my logo. Click over there, you can see all the other videos of this project, the S124 VA Turbo is getting there. So, it's been a while, I think it's two and a half months maybe. So I had a very busy time, so um, yeah, I fixed all the issues from the last video we had, so the suspension issues and the uh, I had, well, I have more little sweat on the brake caliper, it's all fixed. So in between I drove I think now another 100 kilometers with the car. So uh, the most important thing is that the car is street legal, today I got my new papers for the car. So it's the only thing I need to do is to do the uh, regular check. So and it's most called in the UK, it's MOT here in Holland, it's uh, APK. That's just a, for an old time like this, it's a two yearly checkup. So it's now an S124 station wagon with a V8 on paper, 4,966 cc's. So I think it's the only station wagon with a V8 in the Netherlands, uh, if there's anything else out there. Let me know, that would be pretty cool. So, uh, in between, so the car is a little bit low now. Because I did also got the suspension fully working so that I can adjust it in the car. I will show you that in a minute, that I've got it all working. Um, to show you with the engine running, I will do that at a later point when the checks are all done. Uh, so I can legally drive it and then also show you how it works, but I can show you what I built in. So, Engine bay wise, it's all still the same, but I got it all. Uh, what I did in between is change the springs in the front so they are no harder. So, this is the lowest setting I can put it on, and in the back is also the lowest setting. So, last time I had pro problems and it will completely drop. So, I now change it to harder springs because it was also a little bit floating above 160. So, uh, now there are harder springs in it, and uh, this is like a safe setting for now because I need to get the wheel arches in in the back later on. So this is pretty safe. So let's show you in the car. So I got the a few things new in here and also started with a dashboard so you can see I have a digital screen. And um, the reason I did this because like two years ago I bought a W126 Speedo and they are getting rare and the one that I had already for two years was broken so I was completely done with it and could not find the campus uh, uh, numbers for the W210 cloud cluster to get everything working so I did some research and uh, you can see there is some file over it because it's just I just built it in last weekend and just in testing so I will get it off when everything is built in but it is uh, 10 point 33 inch screen so it's like 27 centimeters and 12.7 like this so this maximum what you can put in here um, when I put the power on I will show you that it will start up so also built in here now uh, it's a LED with uh, I think 8, eight LEDs in it a switch and a pop meter so when I put power on, you can see the level of the suspension front and back. So I don't have two settings for like front and back separate because yeah, I don't see the point of doing it. I only see the point is raising the complete car up and down. I don't need a low rider that is up in the front and down in the back. Uh, yeah, for me it's not necessary. I can do that, but <coughs> because the pop meter is uh, double connected, but the level is coming from the back and it's because the lights will then walk from up. So it's when the car is going up, also the lights are getting more on. That's why I did it. <coughs> so, um, for the rest I have the two fuses from the ECU out of it because otherwise we have also kind of noises and then I cannot show you anything. So. So power is on now, so let's see how fast it becomes. So it's an Android 13. So this also has the um, Bluetooth 5.0, so it can connect more than one uh, connection. So you can also do all other kind of things. But this thing has more options than I really need. 
because I only want it for the dash but you can also do navigation on it and uh, control the radio and that sort of stuff so I'm not really sure if I'm going to do it because if you do Android Auto you cannot use the it is a dashboard what I want to do it so it's not really necessary and I'm still thinking I'm going to do with this menu it's not really bad but it will start up in this screen if I then put it in the Max issue M dash app so it will not start up in that app I want to have a look if I can get it starting up in the app straight away so if I then select it then this is my dashboard this is just what I put in now you can change it every time you want it so um, yeah it's pretty good so for my seating position this is what you see so the gauge is pretty much the same size I got the uh, RPM and all the I got map sensor so it's just boost pressure coolant temperature oil pressure all the important things I think there are more on there than you need uh, just for driving so I will remove a few so it's same with lambda values you will you will not need it all the time so I you can have two displays in here so you also have display 2 I have nothing in here but you can make it for example a display one a simpler setup and for just normal driving and if you want to have it like uh, more info like ethanol values and that sort of stuff you can put it in the second one then you also have in this app a diagnostic so if you got an error code like overboost or anything else you can still see it and there are some settings you can change uh, uh, like colors and that sort of stuff so yeah it's it's a, a, a lot of functions so you can do uh, hand so how to connect it and that sort of stuff so now it's trying to connect that's because but my ECU is off so that's why it's not showing real life values but then it's pretty noisy in here so um, then you have on this side still the menu yeah I'm trying in some applications because this thing can also stream YouTube so it's unnecessary in a car I think for me but then you have full screen then this menu box is, is not here but you can also like uh, close this and do like navigation so that's pretty yeah it's easy it's just easy to have not really necessary but it is easy so if I put a light on then you can see a little bit more you can see I have some space left here and the old couch cluster is still behind it so I have a light here and a light over there that I can fill up so um, for in the Netherlands with this age of this car you don't need all those lights but I will build them in later on so I just I want the blinkers to be uh, in here and I have to have a look to uh, uh, put the for example battery voltage light and uh, high beam light that sort of stuff I will put on the sides and then make it nice and clean and then the foil can come off but I just want to have it undamaged as much as possible so the only modification I needed to do with the screen is that on the top in here I needed to remove a little bit of the foam and I uh, close it up back with some sealant and uh, so yeah it fits pretty good you can remove it very easily also it's pretty nice you can also control radio in this thing so if you want to use Spotify you can stream it through your telephone that's maybe the only thing I'm going to use so to the suspension so I got a suspension this side uh, the reason is that I have an on off button if you can see it it's now uh, on four stripes if I lower it completely th then three and two will stay on the reason for that is is that I can lower it more than it is now because I have to do the rear wheel arches and not have it yet on the highest position but you can get it fully fully on high position and then it will it will blink the last light that's just how I connect it I can just screw it and then all the lights go on but uh, yeah and if you're then done with it with these um, actuators you can just put the power off and it keeps the old position and then they are not still fluctuating all the time so this is just a nice function I think to have and now I have it just on five or four so this like 50% level and it's now lower so if I start up the car now it will raise the suspension so that's the option that I have for the suspension also and if I put the light off you can see how what the color is that's pretty good to do it's not too much 
and this is the larger, the larger the button you can just put it off so uh, normally in here it's nice to know for the people normally in here was the uh, headlight adjustment was in here so it's yeah it was almost a perfect fit with this uh, led light so on this side I still have done the function for the suspension so I got the suspension has two settings this is shock absorbers I already firmed them a little bit up so it's it's really a spot setting now and it drives very good in the corners already but it needs some adjustments so shock absorber settings and ride height and the dash that is uh, the main thing that's pretty new to it and I had a lot of work on other things where I didn't want to spend time on but I had to so uh, that's all done so I think it's a good setup let me know what you think I know it's a more modern setup I also hope there is some uh, maybe coming an option to get these gouges in this app more like the classic uh, uh, video meters because yeah, it's still the Maxis is still an, an, a Swedish company and they drive a lot of Volvos and Volvos also had the old video meters that looked like a Mercedes uh, uh, gouges so in BMW, Audi all uses the old video meters so it was pretty nice if we get the same kind of setup so I have to play with it but I think there is more to it to uh, to change uh, these kind of things but I think it's a cool setup so let me know what you think and uh, maybe I can get uh, a gear uh, because I'm going to send a compass signal to Maxi's U to get shift cut and then I can maybe put a light in here which gear I am I'm in so uh, yeah I think this is of course it's it's not the classic look but I think it, this is the best to have in my opinion I think I like it I can also change the settings from the screen so it when it's in night it will dim a little bit so it's all just like a like a tablet so it it works just pretty good but it's made to be in a car this this one so I have it connected now in my cigarette lighter uh, position and if I put the key on it will just start up it takes five to ten seconds and yeah maybe some people think it's long yeah, I'm not really yeah don't care really that it takes five to ten seconds I like the, the look of it so yeah in later videos uh, when I'm really going to drive the car I will try some more options but uh, for now uh, yeah I will leave it uh, like this uh, what I think is pretty cool is that I, I have not connected yet is an uh, yeah, the, the fuel gouge for the tank tank level is not um, yeah, I don't have it connected yet. I have to have a look if I can connect it because I used all my outputs and inputs, so I cannot change anything over anymore. Then I have to lose an input. So uh, maybe I can do that because I now have also uh, exhaust gas ba uh, exhaust back pressure, and you only really look at that when you're doing a dyno uh, session and have a look if your turbo is in the right right size for your application so maybe I can lose that one and take it for uh, the real real life fuel gouge I have to have a look but for now there's a cool option in it I have uh, a filter vitriol fuel tank so I put this on 60 liters so this car has a 72 liter fuel tank so I think it's like 5 liters yeah, I think it's 5 liters spare so normally you have then 67 liters but I put it on 60 just to be sure and then you have also fuel consumption average and then it will calculate it and you can uh, also reset it in I think I have that button somewhere I can put it in here and then you could if you go to the to the fuel pump you can reset it and it goes back to back to 60 liters so um, if I'm, I have to have a look if that that's working so I put the fuel tank full and you drive like uh, 100 kilometers then it says you used this kind of amount of fuel so it will drop down from 60 to say 50 liters and then say it's an average fuel consumption is calculated because you used 10 liters of fuel and then if it's the correct value or not the correct value you can adjust it and then it's 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 pretty reliable if you put the right values in it and then I don't need to connect the original fuel gauge but if you forget to reset your fuel, your fuel tank back to 60 liters then you're fucked and you just drive your fuel tank empty so I think for me it's just to try this and maybe later try something else 
but also is a function in this tablet or this uh, screen is you have a backup camera I don't have it connected I didn't order it but it's like if you put it in in rear drive you can connect it and then it will show up a camera I think it's a nice feature I I'm not sure I'm going to use it but um, I never had one but maybe I connect it not sure yet and you also can connect an a camera that will be uh, on the front so what you see in some countries are the videos on YouTube if you damage somebody else's car or somebody else has damaged your car it's just for insurance purposes and that sort of stuff it can also be connected on this one but I also don't have it but for now I think it's a cool setup I like it and uh, yeah we will see so that's the video for now um, Next video will be about uh, driving the car and show uh, the dashboard that the surfing thing working and show the suspension working. Um, yeah, then uh, and from that on I will have a look. Maybe I will put a valve in the exhaust because it's very silent. I was in, through the inspection with 87 decibels at 3500 RPMs. So it's really quiet. It's like an original s -Lar. So it's it, at the moment it's a really real sleeper. The only thing you hear when you step on half throttle and the engine not making that much noise, but you're building boost pressure, is, is the nice turbo sound you have. So you don't really have the exhaust sound. So I think it sounds pretty cool, but I also want to have the option to have a valve open and have a look if this engine will really sound like a V8 if I take the, the muffler out of it and uh, have a valve in it. I have that valve already, so it needs to be installed. So that we can do in a few next videos. And then also dyno session. So the car needs to go in the dyno, so I have it fully set up. So now I have an RPM limit of 5,200 RPMs. And the boost pressure is in 0 0.45 bar. So uh, I expect it to make just over 400 horsepower at the crank, like 420 or something. And torque should be 550 or something, I think now. It feels like that. So we will see if that is real, real numbers in uh, some of the next few videos in the summer. So, um, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, put a thumbs up and have a look in the right corner for the other videos. And don't forget to have a look on jnspeedshop.com. The link is over here. And thanks for watching. And see you for the next one. Bye bye.